used to kind of learn this position. I don't know if you guys play with it a lot or not. Um, I, I learned it from my lineage, and then it's really funny. Just the other day, I saw that the Danaher guys do this. I think they call it the clamp guard because your knees are like kind of clamped on them. And then I call it the Vail Tudo guard. Um, Vail Tudo means like anything goes. So it's really good for like elbows and some other stuff. But it's also good for competition jiu jitsu. And anyway, so keep your arms side. We're gonna just start in the, the end position and I'm gonna show you several setups of how to get there. And then from it, several finishes later, okay? But the general idea is your foot is gonna be on their hip. Your knee's gonna be up by their chin and your top leg is by their ear, okay? So what's important about this, there's several different ways to get into it, but what I wanna do is I wanna create a lot of pressure on his tricep, on the back of his arm with the inside of my thigh. So I wanna be pinching here. If I don't have that pinch in the weight, he can posture up, but I'm still safe. I still have a lot of submissions and that stuff, but I wanna break him down. So. What I want to just work on in the beginning is just kind of getting to this position, however you get there, and then really just learning that pressure, that bite. And I find it's easier for me to put pressure if my heel is more by the ear, okay? And then I'm not trying to squeeze with my calf, it's my inner thigh on the back of his tricep here. So what we want to do, Brian, posture up, it's difficult. Sometimes if he posts his hand to get up, get up, it makes it difficult for me, but he might be able to do it. But I can take it out, I can set up different submissions and stuff. So, here, we're just gonna play with this position. I want you guys to go on the left side and the right side, but really put that pressure there, that bite. When I first started learning it, I tended to be it was easier for me to be here, but now I can't hit him, I can't do, I can't choke him, I can't really do much. So I want you to be able to easily get him with an elbow with either, either hand, either arm, okay? So it's better to be here than here. It's probably easier in the beginning to keep the pressure this way, but it's less effective. So we wanna be here. If you post a hand, you can deal with it that hand, or you can deal with that, the arm, I'm sorry, the leg. If he starts to stand up, kick his knee up. Break his, just make his life miserable. But keep that pressure a lot. Okay, so let's just play with that and then we're gonna get into how to get into it and a bunch of submissions from there. One, two, three. All right, so let's talk about uh, a couple entries into it and then at the end we'll do uh, submissions from there. So, actually, there's plenty of times from the closed guard where I can end up breaking his, his posture down and I'm gonna get it over. Okay, so this is a good place for me to start. Um, so once I have this overhook, a lot of people use a lot of energy to try to keep it and they squeeze. So pull, pull your arm out. It's very difficult for me to keep it if I don't do a couple small adjustments. So you just basically do a guillotine into his elbow. So what I mean by that is I'm just gonna be pulling straight up. I don't want to go deep and I don't need to squeeze and use a lot of energy. I just pull straight up and that's just, and I keep a little bit of tension there all the time. So pull your arm out. It's like, it's, it's stuck. So this is a good way to hold it. It's good for this type of guard. If you know, if you need to fight and you're doing other things, it's a good way to keep this arm. But what, what right now I need to do is I need to get sideways. So I'm going to move my hips to the same side that I have this overhook. And how I do that is I put my leg straight on his thigh and I turn my hips. I wanna push on his shoulder or push on his face so he can't follow me back. Because if I make this progress and then he's here, I make progress and then he's here. So I wanna to try to keep that progress. So straight thigh, hand either on the face or the shoulder. And that gives me room to bring this up. It's a good entry, okay? So sometimes he's pretty insistent on keeping his hips square with me. So I have this overhook, I turn, he follows me. I turn, he follows me. Guess what? He's overcommitted. So there's a good sweep from that set. So overhook, thigh, turn the hips, make distance and make it difficult for him to follow you. 
here. Bring your knee up and your leg up at the same time. Try not to be here. Try to be here where I can elbow him with either one. So let's play with that. Um, we'll do the sweep in a second. I'll give you more details on that, but just that initial setup, okay? One, two, three. The person on top kind of knows when you're cutting an angle, it's bad for them, right? Like if I was trying to box this guy and he's over there, he's got an advantage. So anytime you're in the, in the guard, it's, it's really good to always just cut some sort of angle and be off to the side. So typically someone who's experienced, if he's got this overhook, yeah, hold on. And don't grab the lapel for now, because what if we're doing the no key? So, so don't let me help. So instead, relax. Just pull straight up. It's, it's, it's tough for me. Okay. That, that pressure right there, I can't get it. Okay. And you're not using a lot of energy. Yeah. So when you put this leg straight and you're sideways, uh, don't put your foot on my thigh for now. Yes. I'm just walk on top of you and keep you square. Sure. Do it again. Keep it square down. Okay. So what's important? Relax now. So you get if the person keeps doing that, you get it like kind of bait them into thinking they're in a good thing and kind of comfortable with it and you can catch them off guard. What's important on the sweep is that this leg, not the one that's going straight, stays pretty close to that ridge. Because if there's a gap between our body and he moves, he's gonna do a lot of motion, waste all the energy, and then I'm gonna move a quarter of an inch. But if he's got this connected to me, he moves a quarter of an inch, I move a quarter of an inch. There's no wasted energy. So he starts to move sideways. We'll do it on threes for this drill. He, I don't feel like he get past easily because there's a pinch too. If he's got a loose, lazy leg, I'm going to start doing stuff. But it's difficult for me. So I'm going to go one. Do it again. And also you can use this hand on my shoulder to make my life more difficult. Like I have to really commit. Two. Three. Boom. So you're going to use their energy against them. You're going to make them kind of overcommit. But you let them do it once, twice. And now they're kind of like, oh, that's easy. I'll get back there. The last two times I did it, nothing went wrong. And then right, you don't want to do it too early. Like if he tried to do the sweep now, yeah, I, I don't buck, right? So wait till I'm here. Yep. Boom. Your bottom leg on this side is trapping my, my leg from being able to go wider and wider. This one is tipping me over. So close your guard. Get a little bit higher. Perfect. Straighten your leg out. Good. Good. Perfect. Good. So I don't know if you can see it on that side, let's do it one more time. We'll go, you can probably see two three now. We're gonna do it on one. Go right, now. You see how these legs low on my thigh? I can't step wide. This one's connected to my hips and my ribs. Go. All right, one, two, three. Good position set up from just that, that overhook guard and getting a little bit sideways. You can grab the far collar and go for a collar choke. But a really good one is uh, people, especially in nogi, if things are a little slippery, they want to rip their arm up. So, can I borrow you, sir? So, if he's got that guillotined arm, they go keep it like right there. It's helping him to get out. So if I'm slippery, I might be able to get out. But a natural reaction for a lot of people is to swing it in. Okay. So the trick is for him, is he gonna pre prevent that? But I might be able to see, I got space, I'm clearing his hip, and I'm able to come out. So one thing he can do to prevent that is keep his knee just a little bit higher. Because then I slip, I run into that. Okay, now with your overhook hand, unhook the slide down and grab my elbow. Okay, perfect. You know, my elbow. Um, oh, legs uh, over the top here. And keep it glued to your body. So I'm here, I run into that, yeah, perfect. 
This hand is going to go immediately over. You're going to do a knife hand, and you're going to go straight under my wrist. Over, 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 and now under. Good. Now he's got a few more. Finish that. Then switch real fast. So I've got this overhook. It's starting to create problems. He's starting to get uncomfortable. I'm going to see on my right side. So he's going to start swimming that arm at yes. But if he's just bumping in my hip right now, if I can slow him down. If I was a little more here, exactly. So I can get sideways and get a higher guard. So he goes to swim and just cuff it. Get up, get out. It's difficult. I've got good control. So I don't want his elbow to separate from my body at all. I want to keep it glued tight. So I'm not going to have loose arms with flared elbows. I'm going to slide and just keep it really tight. I don't want to like have to like start to fumble for stuff. So in a perfect world, I'm going to change the angle of my body, more facing north, my hand with the straight hand, so over the top and under the wrist. So just here. And now I've got it. You can put your foot here or on the back. Either one's correct. Get sideways. And what I like to do is using that foot on the floor, I like to drive weight into his shoulder because he can start to posture up and then I end up in battles. And yeah, there's solutions and stuff. But if I keep pressure from that foot here, I've got a lot of control. And this is gonna be tight. Because if, if this is loose, he can step around and now, now I'm in trouble. So same thing, we're right here, this is on the floor, this leg is up here. And then just go for the, the finish. You're gonna see again, you got it. Please. Okay. Something happens, I break him down in the overhook. Start to get sideways, knees a little bit high. Boom. Here. Either this or here. Got it? Okay, one, two, three. So the first entry we did into that, I call it the male tutor guard or that clamp guard, or some people call it the side guard if you have to the side. So we did the one with you scissor the legs. Um, anybody already, sir? This is more for mixed martial arts and not necessarily sport competition, but, um, there's, in a fight, he either needs to keep me away or he needs to be close. Cause this is really bad uh, for him when I'm in this middle ground. And what's kind of funny is every time we roll just in the gym for fun, this is the distance that we always have. So we get really used to having a guard like that. If this was a fight, that's not good. He was like he just did, his instincts were perfect. He grabbed me and he pulled me close. Now I can't make the rain. And now he's got set up or relaxed. I start to try to get up. I make mistakes. Now he can submit me. So the game is kind of like bring me close and then make me make mistakes and take advantage of them. Or if he can't control me, he's got to get his knees in the, between us and get like in a safe spot here. Because now I'm out of range and don't move. Uh, let me move your body a little bit. I can't touch his chin. Make a fist touch my fist. He's, he's in a better position than me. So you gotta either get distance or keep close. There's a problem though. So if I'm here, just get your legs between us somehow. Good, now he's in a better position than me. Or I'm gonna throw a punch, pull me into you. Boom, now he's got an advantage over me. The problem is pushing me away, getting far. Oh, boom. You're getting mobbed, getting me close. Oh, boom. So when the person can control that middle distance, it sucks. So um, we're gonna go to immediately, I'll show you how in a second, to here. We'll put that, that leg over. Yeah, it's gonna be, this is gonna how I'm gonna end up. Okay, and put it up over my ears a little bit. Good. Do that again. Push your hips up. I can't touch it. If this leg is loose, I can come over. So you have to have that pinch. Now, turn your hips that way, knock me over. Put your arm under my arm. 
and comb your hair. Oh, this way? No, other way. Like that. Now here we are in the same position. But here's how we're going to get into that entry. When I'm in this mauling middle position, two on one, just to get enough distance to get that knee in front of my, you don't want it on the outside, yeah, you want to get it there, and throw the other way back. So I'm going to do this to you. So, I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't. Now, when I try to push you away, I was fine there. So control that a little better. So I'm trying to get you close, good. I'm trying to get you away. This is a problem on the big side. He had that hand up and punched it again. So here and here. Now, if I'm loose and too close, yeah, I can get hurt. I want to be here. And then get him there. Go to this side. So that's Two on one. Throw both legs up at the same time. And try not to meet your friend in the face. But, yeah, maul me. Here. Boom. Boom. So I get to a safe spot fast. Switch. And then let's do it. Uh, let's face it. Switch. So the person, yeah, he's got space here. And there's me. Boom. And out from here, yes. And then put your arm under. And then here we are in that same position. So, top person to push you now. We're going to be in about this range. Also, grabbing the gi in the fabric makes life difficult for him. So, we're here. Yeah, make this is. Boom, boom. Perfect. Okay. Any questions? Good. One, two, three. What well, was cool is seeing how little bit easy to get into the entries. And, uh, um, I just saw a sweep, a perfect execute sweep over there. I just saw an almost climber right here. I saw a reversal there, like a, another sweep. So that's the thing about that position is once you have a basic understanding of just some basic submissions, you're gonna start seeing all of them. You'll, um, uh, are you good? <clears throat> so if I want, I can actually just take a garment and break it against my leg. That's a, not super technical, but I can just, since I got it, it's easy for me. I can just kimura him here. I can end up in a triangle easily. So that, there's a couple that I want to go over. Sometimes the person's going to drive and swear up on me. Yeah, like that. Here, he didn't do exactly what I expected, but he's actually overcommitted this way. So, I'm going to run fast. I'm here trying to get to him. Yeah, belly down. Yep, perfect. I'm here, smash me down. Yep, perfect. <laughs> okay, and then we're just gonna play with it for the last, I don't know, 10 minutes. Come here. One more platter. Perfect. How did you guys finish one more platter? I guess it's a little bit different, but it's right there. Kimura, tap. Grab my arm and just break it against your thigh. Two hands on my wrist, tap. Okay. Let's say I don't really overcommit. Try it. Tap. So there's a ton of fun. Or just hand the fist in the face a lot. 
That's a good deal. Or sharp elbows. So you got a lot of different varieties of attacks from there. But the two right now for the next five minutes, I want you to play with when they posture up, knock them over, and then back into that mount. Or if they're driving, I try to like here yeah, that is really comfortable. So some people want to like follow you up. Here, so the belly down. Exactly. So just play with those two. Got it? Okay. One, two, three. See. Sometimes people, uh, maybe they're up on points, or they just don't want to engage with you or anything else. A lot of times, they'll control your hips and just walk you down and just hang tight. And that can be kind of problematic. So what Brian's going to do, he's going to open his guard and he's going to straighten both legs and push his hip up. He's going to do a very slight hip escape. We're just going to do it to this side today. So he can, yep. Now he's got a little bit more wiggle room. And with that same sort of thigh thing, move your hips out that way. Good. All right, so it's gonna be very similar uh, motion for you guys. But he's gonna put two hands on my shoulder. But the important thing is, is he's gonna knock my body over with his leg as he's pushing. So when he lifts his hips up, lift your hips up high, it actually gets my head off of his body a little bit and gives him a little more space for the second hand. Okay, he's gonna do a small hip escape out to the side, and as he brings this leg up, the intent is to get it into my armpit, and he's gonna push my head to the floor hard that way. So, I'm locked down, I'm hunkered down. Yes, two on one, good, yes, there. Bring your knee up, put on your hip, swim under. Yeah, now you've got what you need. Okay, so I'm stalling out, boom, hips up, little hip escape. Yes, and that leg is powerful. A couple of hits goes, I'm getting shoved that way by the leg, and I'm also getting shoved that way by his hands. Here, good, boom, yeah. Okay, bring your knee up, pinch. Because if you don't pinch, go back. If that leg is lazy, I'm starting to pass. So you, the, the theme of today was always that pinch. Sorry. I can't hit him right now, he swept me, boom. So, we're not gonna drill this right now, but that's an entry. Okay, switch real fast too. I'm gonna talk. Sometimes he throws a big punch. Same thing, thigh, I'm blocking it, but my thigh gets him over here. So now I'm in a good defensive position where he can't attack me, but I can get him. So you'll see the thing here is moving with that leg. Moving with that leg. So just some, just some uh, other entries that are possible for that position. So if you just go ahead and play around, do whatever you want for the next five minutes, I think we're gonna wrap up for lunch. One, two, three. <laughs>